And um, amazingly, we found out that Congress had just uh, chopped all of the funding off for the for the Vietnamese. They were down to firing just a very minimal amount of uh, ammo. The General Vien told me they were flying something like about 25 percent of their sorties because they had no uh, uh, aviation gas. And suddenly, um, our our uh, ally, who had uh, we had fought with led with, supported, and trained uh, was suddenly almost uh, defenseless. So kind of uh, pull, up, pull that up on your radar screen and think what might happen in Iraq. We've been s appropriating about 40 some odd billion dollars in multiple appropriations. I think every one of you ought to be in contact with your congressman and tell him not to pull the plug on Iraq. Because if that money isn't there to support the Army, the Marine Corps, or the Air Force, we're going to have another Vietnam on our hands. After all the marvelous work that these young kids have been doing, we listened to four of them yesterday. And they make your heart just beat a mile a minute because they're exactly uh, as uh, Dr. Sarley described them. They are our follow-on generation, and their war is uh, absolutely as good as the Vietnam War or the Korean War or the World War II. <clears throat> we cannot uh, we cannot shirk our responsibility uh, to make certain that these kids get the appropriate funding and that we have the country behind them all of the time, all of the way, in every way. Can we take a few questions from the floor? You have some over to the right, I believe. If you, if you knew that you were going to be POWs beforehand in Vietnam, would you still have served? Interesting question. Could you say it again? I've, uh... the, yes. I think the question was, if you knew beforehand, would you have gone? I think, um, as was alluded to earlier, we all volunteered to go. And one of the things I like to remind people is I had to fight to get into flying, I had to fight to get into fighters, and I had to beg to go to combat. And being over 21, knowing what the possibilities are, I would not shirk from that. So, if I had to do all over again knowing what I knew now, I would do it exactly the same. what kind of friends I have. You're damn right I'd do it again. He likes, he likes convicted felons. Yeah, you know, I, 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 don't, I think any one of us would, would tell you uh, we were lying if we said, yeah, I'm anxious to go. But all, when you look at all the good things that came out of it, you know, for us personally, I mean, the things we don't take for granted, the bond that we have, I mean, you can't buy that. You can't teach that. You can't... Uh, you can't share that uh, in any other way than just to live it. And uh, so if you don't look at the glass as being half empty for spending six years of your life in the pokey and you look at what happened as a result of it, I think any one of us would say, okay, the glass might have been empty by that experience or drawn down, but we're much richer for it. I mean, look, look at the Doolittle Raider guys. I mean, they volunteer to go do something, you know, with probably a greater understanding of the fear that they might not come back than we did. I mean, we were golden knights. I mean, we were, we were fighter pilots, you know, and nothing's going to hurt us. No, those guys went into it knowing that they were, you know, walking on a short plank, and they did it anyhow. And, and the way those gentlemen conducted themselves this morning, the camaraderie they shared, if you've ever been to one of their reunions, I mean, wow, sometimes you've got to take a step back to go a thousand miles forward.
Yes, sir. My name is Gordon Sims. I'm retired Navy World War II. And uh, no one is, I, we see evidence of our, uh, many of our politicians uh, losing courage and uh, getting in step with uh, the popular anti-war. But no one has mentioned the influence of our uh, major media that has certainly had a great effect of this uh, recent election, I would say especially in Virginia. I'm from Virginia. But uh, I would say I'd like to hear from doctor here uh, and others, uh, what, how do they feel about the treatment by our media, major media? So the way I understand the question is you're interested in hearing from them about the impact of, of media on specifically their experience, or you would like them to comment about yeah, with the support and current issues? The, the support and the possibility of cutting off funding. Uh, so uh, to me, the media has had a tremendous impact of the attitudes of the American people and of the politicians. And uh, to me, it, it has not been the proper influence. I'd like to hear other opinions. Gentlemen. Hey, listen to Fox. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't think there's any question, but uh, you know, if the media would go more than 25 miles from the green zone, that they would see all the good things that are going on. If they, and, and but you know, the way that uh, that that's again the way this country works. I mean, you can agree with him, you can disagree with him, you can. Tune into Fox like uh, like Jack and I do, and you know, ignore the other people who, were, you know, are too uh, too biased to, in our mind. Perhaps we're biased, but I don't think, uh, as you say, you know, the media is very objective in, re in reporting what's really going on. But that doesn't sell newspapers. That doesn't sell TV time. You know, the fact that we've got a bunch of GIs and a uh, Army National Guard outfit from Arkansas is out building a school, you know, 100 miles away from Iraq. Well, it's hard to get there. You got to go through the fringes of the. Of the, of the green zone, you got to go through all those possible bad things that can happen, you know. So who wants to go out and watch GIs from Arkansas build a, a, a school in Iraq? It's not news. I can honestly tell you from the missions I flew, flying guys back from Iraq, we actually picked them up at uh, Landstuhl, Germany, the missions I was allowed to fly back to, uh, to, uh, to the States. These, these kids all want to go. But the other good news is about half of the casualties are not war-related. You know, these are guys smashing their thumb with a hammer while they're building a school. These are guys dropping a crankshaft on themselves while they're trying to help somebody put a car back together, falling through a roof. Or uh, some of the funny ones were guys who were running around at night playing tag with those little goggles that got down in front of the head. You know, so I mean, a lot of the injuries are, are come from things like that. Those are the good news. Those are the funny things. That again, you're right. You know, the media really doesn't paint a balanced picture. And uh, not to get too political here, but you know, one of the great revelations to me in this war was some guy named Geraldo Rivera, who 10 years ago was so anti-military, it seemed, you know, I couldn't stand him. And now he's one of our biggest boomers, and he's one of the few guys that actually goes over and does uh, a lot of the good news stuff, which I rather enjoy seeing on Fox. The, the Vietnamese had a... The Vietnamese had a media room where they would drag the POW's room, not a group, just room at a time. And they would be pictures of the anti-war movement, which they would describe as three million people marching down streets in San Francisco who had a sign that said, we are against the war, we are against six other things, and the Colts. Now there's a hell of an anti-war statement. We're against the Baltimore Colts. So the first time we went in there, we saw something that we'd never seen before. I've been in there three years. It was uh, the wet t-shirt look on a very ample female gendered lady. She had a sign over her set, head that said, make love, not war. <laughs> 